is circulated in the atmosphere. The sequence of physical and chemical processes by which atmospheric nitrogen is circulated in the atmosphere. Then four natural processes is involved in nitrogen cycle, which are nitrogen fixation, nitrification, denitrification, and decay. So we have NNDD, nitrogen fixation, nitrification, denitrification, then decay, nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen compounds in the soil include emos, ammonia, nitrates, and nitrites. Then remains of dead plants and animals undergo decomposition by putrefying bacteria, which use the energy released for respiration. So the action of putrefying bacteria upon dead plants and animals causes nitrogen to be released. Then they are eventually broken down into simple substances like carbon dioxide, water, and ammonia. Nitrification process now. Ammonia is washed into the soil by rain to form ammonia compound. You know, when the bacteria has worked upon the dead plants or animal, ammonia is released. The action of rain upon the soil now washes in the soil, forms ammonia compound. You know, water plus ammonia will result into a kind of a chemical reaction that leads to the formation of ammonia compounds. Then the ammonia is then converted into nitrates by nitrosomas. Nitrosomas is a nitrifying bacteria. Also, nitrobacter is another nitrifying bacteria that transforms nitrites to nitrates, which then which are then absorbed in solution by green plants through their roots here for protein synthesis. Now the plant is absorbing back these um, nitrogen compounds to their roots by the action of this nitrobacter. Then the third process, which is denitrification. Some of the nitrates are converted into atmospheric nitrogen or back to ammonia by denitrifying bacteria, thereby reducing the amount of nitrogen available to plants. Nitrogen fixation is the process by which Combined nitrogen is added to the soil from free gaseous nitrogen in the hair. And nitrogen fixation could be by thunderstorm nitrogen fixing microorganism. Thunderstorm, minute amounts of atmospheric oxygen released during lightning combines with nitrogen to form nitric acid. Then rainwater dissolves the nitric oxide to form nitric and nitrous acid. Then they combine with other materials in the soil to form nitrates and nitrites. The nitrates are then converted to plant protein. Nitrogen fixing microorganisms. Rhizobium bacteria is a nitrogen fixing microorganism in a symbiotic relationship with the roots of legume plants, such as beans, form nodules. The plant supplies the bacteria with food while the bacteria bacteria secrete ammonium compounds that are absorbed and used by the legume to manufacture amino acid and protein. So it's a symbiotic relationship, it's a relationship in which both of them benefit. Then this is the uh, nitrogen cycle diagram. You have the free nitrogen in the hair, the plant protein absorb it, then the animal eats it. So we have the animal protein, then when they die, you have the ammonia, the NH3, then action of nitrifying bacteria, nitrosomonas and nitrococcus, you have nitrates, then you have another nitrifying bacteria, nitrates, the nitrifying bacteria gives it to free nitrogen, then you have lightning occurring, then absorption by green plants, then denitrifying bacteria. Decomposition is the process of breaking down of complex organic molecules in dead tissue. A decomposer is an organism that obtains energy from decomposition. Then two major groups of decomposers, we have the micro decomposers and the macro decomposers. The micro decomposers, they partially digest organic materials extracellularly with the help of enzyme extracellular that is not inside the cell but outside then they absorb all the nutrients and energy they, they need the rest is released into the soil 
Then examples of such microdecomposers we have certain bacteria and fungi. But for macrodecomposers, they speed up decomposition by breaking down organic matter into smaller pieces for microbial action. Examples we have the mushroom, the earthworm, termites, snail, nematodes, and so on. What are the roles of decomposers? The composer, they are, the putrefying effects cause decomposition of organic matter to yield up the raw materials for other living things. So when, for instance, a plant's material is, let's say a plant is dead, you have a dead plant, and the composers work on it, they decompose the plant and make the nutrients in the plant, they make nutrients available for other plants, the living plants in the soil. So the soil becomes revitalized, it has enough nutrients, it becomes fertilized. So the other the plants can benefit from that decompo decomposing activity. Soil fertility is increased by their formation of humus, then they help in sewage and refuse disposal by breaking down biodegradable material. So when decomposers act on biodegradable material, they help us to dispose our refuse and sewage. They also recycle nutrients to make them available to producer organisms and that's plants. They recycle nutrients and make it available for plant growth. Then some metabolize free nitrogen to add to the pool of nitrogenous materials in living things. Now we're talking about ecological management. Then under that we're talking about associations between organisms. Associations between organisms. We have two types of association between organisms. We have intraspecific association and interspecific association. Intraspecific association is the association between individuals of the same species. Why interspecific association is association between different species? Then the types of association have symbiosis. Symbiosis means living together. Symbiosis is any association between two or more different organisms. That's just symbiosis for you. Any association between two or more different organisms is called symbiosis. And we see examples in parasitism, mutualism, commensalism, saprophytism, predation. Those are examples of symbiosis. The first we're talking about is parasitism. Parasitism is the association between organisms in which one lives in or on another. That is, the, the one that lives on the other is parasite and the one that is being lived on is the host. One organism, parasite, living on another, the host, to obtain its nourish, nourishment and support and also causing harm to it. That's very important. When an organism lives on another, for its own nourishment and support, and also cause harm to it, we call such association parasitism. You know, it's not only a lower animal, even in some human beings, we have some people that are like that. They live on you to obtain nourishment and also cause harm. So that's just parasitism for you. And the organism that lives on the other is a parasite, while the one that is being lived on or that, that arm is being caused to is the host. Then examples, we have tapeworm, telia solium. It is an endoparasite in the intestine of man. Then fleas, lice, they are ectoparasites. They, they live on the skin. They feed on human blood. Then another one is green fly. Green fly is an ectoparasite. It feeds on the plant G. So you find it outside since it is ectoparasite. Then Doda plants, that's Pasita filiformis, you find it on Colano tree. So those are examples of parasitic relationships. The next association is mutualism. Mutualism is the relationship between two or more species of animals or plants in which all benefit from the association. That is, everybody involved in every organism involved in mutualism benefits either two or more. They all benefit. An example of mutual association 
we have nitrogen fixation, nitrogen fixing bacteria and root nodules of leguminous plants. That's a mutual association. The nitrogen fixing bacteria ensures that there is protein synthesis available for the leguminous plants. Then the, the bacteria also gets protection from the roots of the plant. Then another example is the algae and fungi in a lichen. The fungus gains oxygen and carbon carbohydrates from the algae, while the algae obtains water and mineral salt from the fungus, as well as protection from dying out. So that's a mutual relationship. Also, the third one is the sea anemone and emmet crab. The sea anemone obtains crabs of food from the emmet crab, while the emmet crab gains protection from the animal's singing cells. So, we have three examples here. The first two examples are called obligatory mutualism. And why? Because they cannot survive without the other. In the lichen, an algae cannot survive without the fungi. Then the root nodule, nitrogen is bacteria and root nodule, they cannot survive without the other. But the third one, which is the sea animal and the emmet crab, is called the non-obligatory mutualism or facultative mutualism because both, both species can survive individually. Sea animal can be on its own and any scrap can also decide to go on its own. So the relationship is called facultative mutualism or non-obligatory mutualism. The next association is commensalism. Commensalism is an association between two species